I don't know about you. I didn't want a report. Judicial Watch could write a report. Congress could write a report. The media can write a report. We wanted prosecutions. And on the prosecution front, uh, Durham is a big fat fail. In many ways, there's a lot of government corruption that's been exposed in this Durham report, uh, much of which has already been exposed thanks to Judicial Watch's, uh, thanks to Judicial Watch's heavy lifting uh, to uh, uncover the worst corruption scandal or elements of the worst corruption scandal in American history, which is the unlawful, illicit, abusive political targeting of President Trump, the spying on President Trump, the abuse of President Trump that began during his ca uh, candidacy, continued into his presidency, and I would submit uh, continues to this day. Uh, John Durham was first um, hired by William Barr uh, to investigate these various issues in 2019. Uh, he was just a regular U.S. attorney and he was hired to just look at this. So he wasn't special counsel. And then he was uh, at the end of the uh, 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 Trump's term, uh, Barr elevated him or made him a special counsel, which um, included the additional requirement as a result of his being special counsel that he issue a report. Right. But in the end, what did we want uh, from uh, Mr. Durham? I don't know about you. I didn't want a report. Judicial Watch could write a report. Congress could write a report. The media can write a report. We wanted prosecutions. And on the prosecution front, uh, Durham is a big fat fail. Uh, there's no way to slice it other than to conclude uh, that the legal side of the accountability ledger is lacking. Uh, there were three prosecutions, uh, one against um, the uh, FBI lawyer, Klein Smith, who manipulated information and emails to suggest that Carter Page was not a CIA uh, cooperator, uh, basically an asset of the government, uh, to make it easier to spy on him. It was a lie. He, he messed with not only his colleagues, but with the FISA courts, uh, to uh, get this spy application by falsifying a record. And he got a slap on the wrist, right? And then there were two other prosecutions, one of the Clinton uh, campaign lawyer, Sussman, who was accused by Durham of lying to the poor FBI and suggesting that he had information about this um, a fraud story they had come up with about the uh, Trump banks having some sort of connections to Russia. And the FBI was victimized because they didn't know he was working for Hillary. Well, the jury didn't really buy that and they acquitted him. Doesn't mean he didn't lie. It didn't mean that there was misconduct there. But um, that was a failed prosecution. And then there was Igor Zanchenko, who was the uh, Russian intelligence asset by all accounts, further confirmed in this report, uh, that Hillary Clinton had um, hired through Fusion GPS. So he was working for Fusion GPS and he concocted uh, and made up, uh, according to Durham and testimony at the trial, uh, all these false allegations that became uh, key parts of the Steele dossier uh, that was used again to justify spying on Trump and other misconduct against him. Frankly, it resulted in a special counsel that should never have been appointed the Mueller special counsel. It, kind of, it, was, it was an attack on on the Trump presidency like we've never seen before. And uh, Danchenko, he was acquitted as well. You know, he was an FBI asset and, you know, he was accused of, you know, again, lying and, and misconduct and the jury didn't buy it. You know, what, what was kept out of those trials were the guys truly responsible for it, in my view, Hillary Clinton, you know, Obama, the rest and all of that. And there's no indication that Durham ever seriously considered indicting or let alone prosecuting these folks. Uh, I'm not seeing any evidence anyone's brought before a grand jury. I guess Hillary Clinton at least was questioned by Durham. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, the Durham report, now, the, you know, the bad part is the Durham report didn't result in the sort of accountability that we desired. So I'll try to describe as best I'm able of uh, from this 300 plus page report. And I encourage you to read it. It's readable. It's accessible. I think it's important you know about it and you understand it because the media will try to downplay it. 
Uh, the left will try to downplay it. Obviously, the Democratic Party that is um, in part criminally responsible for this, literally through the Democratic National Committee, uh, they have an interest in downplaying it uh, because it's important. You know what these agencies were up to because there's been no accountability, no real check on what they've done. There's been no consequence in significant any significant consequence for the abuses of Trump and other innocents. So I would uh, I would suggest as a citizen you have a positive moral obligation when given this opportunity, this unique opportunity to see this insight into this massive corruption uh, to, to, to read it. And uh, so we'll provide a link to it below. You know, but the summary of it is some of which is, as I said, largely been uncovered by Judicial Watch already. And obviously, uh, Devin Nunes and some other intrepid reporters and investigators uh, outside of Congress as well. And then you had uh, internal investigations by the IG of the Justice Department and other offices in the FBI and, and DOJ, et cetera. Uh, and some of it has already been released in terms of the details through this trial process that I talked about earlier. So what does it show? There was never a good faith-based reason for uh, the uh, uh, FBI to open up Crossfire Hurricane, which essentially was the spy operation, the counterintelligence operation against Donald Trump in uh, the summer of 2016. Of course, this operation was opened up personally by Peter Strzok at the directions of senior officials in the FBI. And they began this unprecedented spy operation on Trump based on the barest pieces of evidence that wouldn't justify this extraordinary uh, spy operation against a normal citizen, let alone a sensitive subject like a presidential campaign or people around him. But that's what they did. And Durham concluded there, there really was no basis um, uh, to fairly open the investigation. And of course, the collusion scandal, uh, Durham reaffirmed uh, that there uh, turned out to be no basis for it at all, despite incredible resources being thrown out, uh, th th being thrown out uh, uh, the Trump team, you had recordations made, you had literal in-person spying made of Trump people. Uh, you had the Steele dossier created uh, by the Clinton campaign. They ran every lead down they thought they could there, except the leads that would obviously should have been run down that would have quickly shown that there was no basis for it. But even what they were doing showed that there was no there there when it came to the Steele dossier. Uh, they, Report details how um, they were willing to give a million dollars to one of the Steele dossier people. I forget if it was Christopher Steele or Danchenko, if you could just come up with some dirt to justify or to um, solidify the allegations that were obviously false in the Steele dossier. And I say obviously false because, you know, many of you probably haven't read the Steele dossier. Yeah, I have. And when you read it, you can see it's ridiculous. It's, it's hysterical conspiracy theories that don't make sense on their face and should be uh, met with a significant amount of skepticism. But in addition to the kind of the on its face, incredis, you know, incredible nature of the material, uh, it turns out, and again, there have been reports to this effect before, but it's fleshed out in the Durham report that everyone knew it was really unlikely to be true because they had intelligence that Hillary Clinton, her campaign was concocting information, tying Trump to Russia to distract from her own problems, namely her email scandal. So their intelligence was, we know Hillary's gonna make stuff up about Trump to try to keep herself out of jail more or less. And uh, uh, mitigate the political consequences of her email misconduct. Now, the FBI knew, the CIA knew, Trump knew, Joe Biden knew, all the president's men, all the president's women in a position of responsibility knew this. And yet they still allowed this malicious spy material, uh, this steel material to be used to justify spying uh, against Trump. Uh, and, you know, as I said before, and as Judicial Watch first um, detailed, because we were the first ones to get the actual FISA warrants, the FISA warrants lacked 
uh, were full of lies and misleading statements and made omissions of material information. Material information means if the information was there, the court may have decided differently, right? Like, for instance, telling the court directly, well, this is Hillary's stuff and we want to spy on Trump because Hillary thinks, you know, he, she came up with this stuff that she, he was uh, involved with the Russians. And so we're going to spy on Carter Page and then directly the whole Trump team. Uh, and that, of course, all that was left out. I think the final uh, count in the uh, FISA warrant misstatements and um, other, quote, knowing errors was 17 over four FISA statements of four FISA requests. FISAs began being issued just before the campaign, and they continued one, two, three, four into uh, the first year of the Trump presidency. And they all knew that it was Hillary that had made this up and she had political reasons that were obvious, but they had intelligence literally that there were political reasons. And according to the Durham report, uh, John Brennan, the CIA director under Obama, briefed Obama, Biden, and other top people in the Biden White House, Obama White House, that this was Hillary's plan. And this briefing, I think, took place in August of 2016. So they're pretending that there's all this evidence that they knew was coming from the Clinton campaign. So it wasn't like they knew the steel dust. They, it wasn't like, and I'm a kind of paraphrasing the Durham report and just general, you know, my general understanding of the issue. You know, they all knew the Steele report had provenance with the Hillary Clinton campaign. And so on top of that, they had separate intelligence that she was setting and going to make stuff up to make Trump look bad vis-a-vis -vis Russia. And they didn't express any skepticism with the Steele operation as a result. And those who had skepticism, it was all ignored. Because as Durham highlights, you, you know, and it kind of fails to connect the dots, at least prosecutorially, highlights the anti-Trump animus of people like Strzok and Page and Klein Smith, who was the guy who was ultimately indicted uh, for actually manipulating information and, 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 and changing documents to try to get these FISA warrants. So it's just incredible corruption. And this is the epitome of election interference. Uh, Trump had his civil rights violated. To the degree there was collusion with government agencies to target him because of his candidacy, uh, it was um, it, it was a um, violation of law six ways to Sunday. I don't know why. Um, I understand the difficulty of prosecuting cases like this, uh, but when you have all this information that Durham had, that these folks knew better and had reason to know better yet still targeted him on specious reasons. How is that not a crime? Now he says just because it's unethical doesn't mean we can make it, prove it a crime. Color me skeptical, color me skeptical. And um, of course it continued into uh, the Trump presidency, these FISA warrants. A lot of this misconduct continued under the Mueller operation so the Mueller operation was also compromised by this corruption. So the special counsel, you know, frankly required in the end, a special counsel investigation. That's how corrupt things were at the FBI and Justice Department, you know, and indirectly the CIA. Now, a lot of folks didn't cooperate with the Durham investigation. Uh, uh, Comey didn't cooperate. Peter Strzok cooperated on one aspect of it, but basically, uh, uh, refused to cooperate on other aspects of it. And I'm curious, so what is the lack of cooperation? Did they get a grand jury subpoena? Did they take the fifth? Or was it just like an IG investigation, inspector general's investigation, where, you know, if you don't cooperate, there's really no way to compel you to cooperate if you're not a government employee. So I'm just curious about that. And my concern about this report is that it's kind of a glorified administrative review. Uh, reporters are going to uh, stop Comey and, you know, some of these other folks are working for left wing media companies and, you know, have high profile voices in the media and attacking the rule of law and continuing to abuse Trump. And so without the prosecutions, you know, where 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 where's the incentive for these agencies and people who are otherwise tempted again to abuse power to target their political opponents? 
um, uh, where's the incentive for them not to do it? And I would argue that the current investigations of Trump are more of the same. Politicized uses of the FBI and Justice Department, misusing the law contrary to evidence, to tar, you know, with no, no evidentiary justification uh, to try to jail Trump. And that's what happened with Comey uh, and uh, Mueller and Schiff and all the rest. They all knew it was a lie, and yet they tried to use the powers of government to destroy Trump. Uh, and for, you know, using law enforcement, you know, spy apparatus and such. And it's a real outrage and it's a real disappointment. I know a lot of folks are excited about the report. I think it's really interesting. I think it's a devastating uh, 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 amount of detail about the corruption at the FBI and Justice Department. The question is, what's to be done about it? And at the end of the report, um, Durham essentially says, well, maybe we can hire someone at the FBI to monitor these issues and make sure they don't happen again. Well, you know, they already have people at the FBI who are supposed to be monitoring these issues. There are already rules in place to prevent the abuse. And, and you know, Durham, Durham says he kind of throws up his hands. He goes, well, I can't, I could come up with new rules. We could come up with new rules, but... If we got bad guys working in the FBI who don't want to follow the rules, what good is that going to do? And I would respond, then you prosecute them. You don't let them go. You know, not only Durham kind of failed and dropped the ball in that regard, uh, Bill Barr, you know, you had Comey leak Trump's FBI files, no prosecution. You had uh, McCabe lie repeatedly. Uh, uh, in investigations related to the Clinton Foundation and leaks and such, no prosecution. So what's the stop? You know, what? Where? what's the check? You know, maybe some of them lost their jobs, uh, but certainly not enough. And, and many of the bad guys either, you know, left voluntarily or are still there. And as I said, it, it's largely continuing. So I would submit that it's actually expanded. You know, they're using the January 6th, for instance, as a pretext to target all sorts of Americans, not just Trump, over, uh, you know, they're exercising their First Amendment rights when they came to either protesting um, an election dispute or, you know, working within the system to dispute an election. Uh, so, you know, these abuses continue. And uh, so, you know, the Durham report is a fail in that regard, but it is a public service in a sense of putting in one place a lot of, as I said, the information we know. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.